What is going on, folks? It's your boy Luke here, RM All Star 100, coming at you with episode 5 of Q and All Star. Q and All Star, episode 5, coming at you on Thursday. That's right, folks. It is Thursday, the day that I say this video is supposed to come out, and it's coming out for the first time on Thursday. Let's go, boys. Oh, yeah. Alright, so this is the weekly series where I answer your questions about pretty much anything. Sometimes it's mostly related to Lego, Lego Star Wars or Star Wars, or like I said, pretty much just about anything you want to ask. We got a bunch of really fun and interesting questions today, and um, yeah, so shout out to everybody that leaves the questions. I love doing this, love answering it, and um, yeah, let's jump right in. And our first question comes from Louie Dog 202 he says who is your favorite dark side slash sith character in Star Wars mine is Palpatine pretty solid choice um I gotta say I'm gonna go with Darth Revan you know he's he's got awesome story going on Knights of the Old Republic is an excellent game and he's just really cool like the whole purple and red lightsaber it's pretty badass and yeah he's got an awesome Lego minifigure too one that I hope to get someday and next up from Paper Baghead I like that. Um, Q and All Star. What do you think Lego is making a Lego land speeder like every year? LOL. Um, honestly, I think for this one, it's probably just because, you know, it's kind of like an iconic little ship, you know, kind of similar to like the Millennium Falcon. Like, it's, you know, people know it, they recognize it. So, like, you know, every couple years, you probably want to make a new version of it to kind of get, like, the newer kids that are just getting into Lego, like younger kids, um, get it's you know every couple of years you got to re-release it and get a new land speeder out for the new fans of Lego. I don't know, that's kind of just my thoughts, but what do I know? Next up, the boss asks, kind of a bad question this time around, but if aliens invaded Earth and said answer in one paragraph or a sentence or two for your video purposes, why we shouldn't destroy Earth and say for some reason humanity chose you to answer? What would your response be? Well, I disagree. I think that's an excellent question. And if aliens were to come to Earth and threatened to destroy us, and I was somehow elected to represent the entire human race, I would say, go for it. We kind of deserve it. You know, take the resources, take the trees, the water, the oxygen, all that good stuff, all the minerals. But, you know, at humans, we had a good run. But I don't know, man. Times are tough. That's all I'm going to say. All right, and Tuscan Productions says, again, thanks for featuring me. Of course, man. I feature everybody pretty much, so. But I'm glad you guys appreciate it because I appreciate the question. So it's a two-way street, you know. All right, there's a lot of big Star Wars mock series on YouTube. What's your favorite and why? Keep up the good work again, LOL. Thanks, man. Um, so let's see. I'm not a huge follower of a lot of these big mock projects. Like, I got mad respect for all these guys that do it. Um... I watched, I followed pretty closely um, to uh, Solid Brick Studios, his Kashyyyk mock when he did that a couple years ago. Um, so I, I tried to follow along with that. But more recently, like I said, I'm not super into it. But I got to say, um, Rich Boy J doing his Starkiller base. Um, I've seen like some clips and some live streams. And he's just got some awesome builds in there. And I think, you know, he's a super talented builder and a nice guy too. I met him a couple times. So. Yeah, I'll go with that. Rich Boy J's Star Killer Base Series. Check it out if you haven't already. All right, and Indiana Skywalker coming at us saying, Thanks for featuring me. If there was ever Star Wars CMF, what minifigures would you like to see in it? I would like to see Saw Gerrera and Yaddle. Very good choices for a very good question. And yeah, um, so yeah, I did some thinking about this. And honestly, there's like with Star Wars, you know, it's such a huge universe. There's like literally like countless characters, you know, like. There's just so many different options they could do from so many different times. Um, so to kind of vary my options here, I'm, I'm going to go with four that I kind of picked out. I'd go with um, uh, Gar Saxon, kind of with his Darth Maul Mandalorian look there. That's a pretty solid figure I think they could make out of. Um, also a Galactic Marine. Um, I know that's a pretty popular figure and one that, yeah, we've never actually seen in LEGO um, officially. And then um, also I'd say some Force Ghosts. I feel like we're, we're kind of overdue to see some Force Ghosts in Lego minifigure form. And I think with the uh, Harry Potter, like the Expecto Patronum kind of stuff, they got that trans blue um, look as well as the Electro figure from a couple years ago. Like, you know, 
you could make some forced ghosts if you wanted to. Let's see it, man. And finally, I'd go with Arcan from uh, Knights of the Fallen Empire, the Star Wars MMO. They had that really cool cinematic trailer, and um, I guess the game ended up not being that good, but that's a really cool looking dude in the Star Wars canon, and one I think would make an excellent minifigure. All right, and Lemon Productions with a question in the similar kind of vein that we just talked about. What is your favorite Star Wars minifigure, and what Lego Star Wars figures do you think Lego needs to make? So, yeah, like I said, you know, I'd love to see Arcan, some Force Ghosts, um, Gar Saxon, you know, kind of in his Darth Maul Mando setup, and uh, yeah. Um, but in terms of my favorite, I got two of them right here. So we got Commander Gree from 2014. Um, I got this in a Bricklink order for a couple bucks too. Um, and I just think he's an awesome looking figure. He's got really great printing on him, um, and yeah, like I've said this before. Um, I got like an old one of my first action figures was Commander Gree, so he's just he's got a special place in my heart, um, and I'm really glad I got his minifigure, and he looks awesome. So, and then another one of my favorites is Luke Skywalker back in um, from like the uh, 2006 2007 Jabba Sail Barge. This is like the first version of Luke Skywalker I ever got. You can kind of see I played with him a lot. I don't know why it's not focusing, but there's like. There's like some some chew marks on him, you know. I was, uh, you know, I didn't take the best care of him, so. Um, but yeah, honestly, he still holds up. He's still one of my favorite minifigures. Just, again, just for nostalgia purposes. So yeah. All right, and Brave Wombat wants to know if you could travel anywhere in the world, no coronavirus, where would you go? So, I would choose to go to. Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. I think it's an absolutely beautiful city. I would love to go to the top of the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, until the Kingdom Tower is completed in uh, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. But for right now, Dubai is the place I want to go. I think it's an awesome city. It'd just be cool to just walk around, check out some awesome buildings and stuff. It's a cool place. All right, and Diego Gonzalez asks, is that a SpongeBob pillowcase on your bed? And what's your favorite Lego SpongeBob sets? Thanks for answering all my questions. Well, of course, man. And to answer those, yes, this is a SpongeBob pillow. It tells me this side is when I wake up, and this side is when I sleep. Got to stay on top of that. But, yeah, I've had that pillowcase forever. I don't know. I just still got it on there, you know. It's my nice uh, my pillow. This thing is nice, dude. But, uh, yeah, and just, you know, the pillowcase doesn't really go with the whole aesthetic of my room. But you know what? SpongeBob's pretty dope. And in terms of my favorite SpongeBob set, I only own one SpongeBob set. And it's this guy right here, the Krusty Krab, back from 2006, 2007, I think. I made a video about him. Um, and, yeah, just an awesome set here. Really great. Looks beautiful. Holds up really well even for being like almost 14 years old. So just a solid set and one that I'm very happy to have in my collection. All right, Polly Nerdiel says, hello, RM All Star 100, love your content. Thank you, my friend, appreciate it. The question I have for you is, have you ever seen Superman Red Sun movie? It is a movie about Superman being raised in communist Russia. If you've not seen it, I highly recommend it. Well, I'll trust you on that recommendation because no, I have not seen the Superman Red Sun movie. I think I've seen like trailers for it, um, but yeah, have not gotten around to seeing that, but, um, my cousin actually gave me his, uh, DC Universe login, so I've been meaning to check that out, and, uh, if it's on there, I'll definitely have to check it out. I've been wanting to get more into the animated DC movies, and, um, that sounds like a good place to start, so thank you for the recommendation. All right, and Thorn Zoom Steam's up with two questions for us today. First one is, Q and All Star, would you ever consider creating a stream schedule? So, um, I've thought about it. I don't know. I kind of do it on Fridays sometimes. Sometimes I'll do it on Tuesdays. Yeah, um, I think for right now, that's probably not the best idea. Um, you know, I, I still got to focus on my class. So, at least for these next two weeks, there's not going to be anything consistent. Um, and then even after I finish my class, like I'm gonna be going away to school pretty soon, like mid-August. So like I'm not gonna have my whole collection with me, so I can't. I'm not gonna be able to like stream every week, you know. Um, but I don't know, it's something to think about, I guess. I don't know. But for right now, I'm thinking probably not. Just kind of streaming here and there whenever I feel like it. And um, his second question is, 
what is your dream Lego set? So I think I kind of talked about this last episode. Um, just the Gene Ocean Arena, like kind of UCS or Master Builder Series, whatever. I think just a big, awesome build with a bunch of Jedi, some droids, the like the, the Acklay and the other monsters in there. I just think that'd be absolutely beautiful to see. So hopefully someday. Then Silas Floyd asks, thanks for answering my questions. Of course, man. My question for this week is, do you like the old General Grievous minifigure? I heard of a lot of mixed feelings about it. Some people hate it. Some people like it. I like it. And I don't know how I feel about the arms on the new Grievous. So I assume you're talking about this old Grievous, this guy back in the day. Um, so, yeah. Honestly, I think he's awesome, dude. You know, he came out like in 2005 or whatever. Still holds up pretty well today. He's got like custom head mold there. And... I don't know. Like I said, he came in one of my favorite, most nostalgic sets, the the Grievous Chase set from 2005. And, you know, he just never gets old, man. He's got four, four lightsabers. Just looks awesome. So I really like him. I mean, you know, I could see how people would be like, oh, he's ugly. But, I don't know, for me, kind of a lot of the stuff on this channel. I like it because it's nostalgic. And honestly, for the time, I think it was a well-done figure and holds up decently well today. All right, and next up, we got Dutastic with, man, a heavy hitter of a question, dude. What is something you, that you want to improve about your channel? So, man, I had to, you know, stop recording, take a second, just kind of think about this for a second. And, I mean, there's a lot, you know. Obviously, um, I'd like to obviously grow, build a community, and become larger. And um, that's obviously the goal. Um and I think the best way to imp do that is by, yeah, improving. Um, I think some of the main things, I would like to get like an actual camera, like I talked about, I'm just using my iPhone right now and it, it works. Um, but, you know, I think eventually there's gonna become a point where I'm like, I should probably step up my game here. So, I don't know, but just kinda, yeah, improving my audio and visual quality, stuff like that. Um, as well as just like being more consistent, you know. Um, I'm, I'm worried about that, especially when I go away to school. Um, I'm going to be busy, you know, I'll, I'll be starting my graduate program. Um, and, like, it'll be tough. And I want to do these weekly videos, and I also want to try and do something else just to kind of, you know, sprinkle in some content. And, you know, with everything going on, like, I don't know. But I don't know how it's all going to work. But uh, I think in terms of improvement, just being more consistent and uh, just kind of up in my quality. So really great question, man. I, I appreciate that. All right, and Bagel Lover asks, thanks for featuring my question again. You're welcome. Do you think we will get a phase two Cody in the UCS gunship? Hashtag gunship gang. So um, honestly, I, I have no idea. I've kind of heard some rumors, uh, a couple of people talking about we might see one. Um, and if so, I think that'd be awesome. You know, that's definitely a really good move on Lego's part. Obviously, there's a lot of people that really want to see this figure. So, like, it'd be a good idea to put him in, like, this large kind of exclusive set. So, I would like to see one. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get the gunship regardless. But uh, still, it'd be cool to see anyways. All right, Cammy Boy XX says, Thanks for always answering my questions. Of course, keep up the amazing videos. Thank you, my man. My question this week is, what is the best Lego set of all time, in your opinion? So, I think, in my humble opinion, I gotta say the 2008 Death Star, dude. I think that's just an absolute classic set. It was on shelves for, like, eight years. Like, man, I wanted that set so bad. But, you know, obviously at that time, it was before, like, I had a job and stuff, and... Um, even now, like $500 for the new one, that's uh, kind of tough. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I think, honestly, I think just so many minifigures, it's an awesome build. You got so many different rooms in there. It's just, it's a knockout set, dude. That's what I think. All right, and Rick Films wants to know, what's your favorite candy? So I got to go with Butterfingers. I think those are just excellent, really great. You know, the chocolate, the butter, you know peanut butter right there's something i don't know it's just delicious absolutely delicious all right and j rod production studio says what is your oldest lego set so my oldest lego set i actually brought it out here for y'all is set six seven three three the canyon showdown came out all the way back in 1997 it's got four great minifigures here some got some bandits and some the sheriff and his deputy so I made a video about this set like 
it was one of my first videos like all the way like two years ago almost more than two years ago and yeah i think it's just a great set it comes with a horse it's got a little carriage there's a little safe on the back and it's just a cool little set and yeah i'm very i don't know how or when i got it but i got it and i'm glad i have it so that's all i gotta say all right, and our final question comes from the Purple Stud. He says, I know you said you weren't familiar with the Mandela Effect in your live stream, but take a brief look at it, and if you have the time, it's pretty interesting. If you do look at it, what are your thoughts about it, and do you believe in it? So, yeah, um, this kind of stems off from the live stream that I did on Tuesday. Um, we kind of, it was me, uh, Doc Sampson, and, and uh, Jared, or J-Rod Production Studios, was, was on the stream, and we were talking about things like the Fermi Paradox, you know, like great filter theories. I'm not going to try and explain that in this video. It's already long enough, but yeah, so um, Purple Stud brought up the Mandela Effect, which I was... I thought I wasn't familiar with it. I looked into it. I kind of got into... I fell in like a YouTube rabbit hole, and I watched a bunch of videos on it. I had heard of it before. I just didn't know that's what it was called. But So the Mandela Effect, essentially, is the idea based off Nelson Mandela. Um, he was obviously the president of uh, South Africa. He died in 2013. And um, apparently, like, a bunch of people, for some reason, were like, no, we're pretty sure Nelson Mandela died back in like 1988 or whatever when he was first imprisoned. I don't know the exact years, but so the idea is like some people remember this completely different. And then another example of the Mandela effect is the Berenstein Bears books or the Berenstein Bears books. Some people thought that it was spelled S-T-E-I-N when it's actually S-T-A-I-N. So for some reason, everybody was like, no, no, no way. So um basically yeah the mandela effect is that uh we exist in a network of like parallel alternate universes and sometimes um people or events or things or memories jump from universe to universe and that's why we have different memories of different things and um so yeah though i do believe that there probably is a multiverse you know there's different versions of you and i out there somewhere um i don't know how to get there but um I think though they do exist, I don't think there's any way for there to be any interdimensional travel. So I don't know. That's just kind of what I think. And I, a couple of the videos that I watched kind of had a similar conclusion where they're like, yeah, you know, other universes exist, but there's really no way that we could connect or communicate or interact or share anything. So it's an interesting kind of thought process and kind of thinking experiment, but I I do not believe in it though. It's a cool idea, but yeah. All right, and yeah, there was all our questions. So this is gonna be another long one. So I appreciate everybody sticking by and uh, watching it. And uh, as always, thank you for asking questions. Obviously, that's how I make these videos and I have a lot of fun doing it. So thank you for giving me content. Um, but yeah. Um, I think kind of going forward, I might have to start kind of cutting out some questions. I don't know if I can do like 20 questions every episode because then it just kind of gets really long and I like to talk a lot, obviously, and elaborate. So I don't know. I'll do another pinned comment and I'll see, you know, are these videos too long? Should I make them shorter? Should I cut out some questions? I don't know. Let me know what y'all think. I'm curious and obviously I want to make something that you guys enjoy and will want to watch. So um, yeah. All right. Uh, once again, thank you for all your questions. Make sure to leave some down below for next week's episode that will probably not come out on Thursday because I have an exam, but I have an exam on Friday. So, but hey, then I'm done with my summer class and it'll be all Lego and a little bit of work here and there. But yeah. Um, all right. That'll just about do it. As always, make sure you have a great day. We will see you next time. Peace.